It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and it's September 21st, 1990. And we've got six movies to look at, starting off with a classic, ending with a classic, and then four movies in between that we'll delve into as we go along. But let's start with the first of the, si the six movies here. And it is a classic in every single word. It's amazing that at the end of this decade, in the 90s, we were still talking about this movie as one of the greatest achievements of the decade. And of course... What Martin Scorsese did in the 80s, starting off with Raging Bull in, the, in 1980, and that becoming one of the best films of the decade. Some may say the best film of the decade. And that here we have another one here. It's Martin Scorsese's classic gangster film, and that is, of course, Goodfellas. Never ride on your friends, and always keep your mouth shut. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Hey, Mom, what do you think? You look like a gangster. I know I By the time I grew up, there was 30 billion a year in cargo moving through Idlewild Airport. You believe me, we tried to steal every bit of it. What do you do? I'm a construction. <laughs> He's not Jewish. Mother Rose. For most of the guys, killings got to be accepted. Hey, Henry, here's an arm. Very funny, guys. Here's a leg. Here's a wing. <laughs> what do you like, the leg or the wing? It's you. to live any other way was nuts <laughs> and we were treated like movie stars with muscle we had it all just for the asking it's gonna be a good summer <laughs> it was a glorious time in a world that's powered by violence on the streets where the violent have power a new generation carries on an old tradition And unfortunately, not too long ago, we lost Ray Liotta, and uh, there's nothing really more to say about his performance in this movie. It's an incredible performance he gives in this film. It's one of the highlights of the film. This movie, just overall, is a freaking masterpiece, man. Uh, 1990 had a lot of gangster movies, movies t set in the past, movies that are very much like this one, that... This movie really defied the expectations that a lot of people had, because this was a year that we had a Godfather sequel, and this one trounced that one considerably as the best gangster movie of the time. Of the time, and it just shows how Martin Scorsese never really lost his touch. There was a couple of times in the eight, '80s where his streak kind of not really ended, but he didn't make as good of movies that he did in the past, like Taxi Driver, or Raging Bull. Still make good movies, but. Not to those high levels, but this movie comes out, and it's just, it's a masterpiece in every sense of the word. The acting is great. Like I said, Ray Liotta is very good here. Joe Pesci is great in this. Lorraine Baracco is great. So is Robert De Robert Robert De Niro, not Robert Downey Jr. Uh, Dennis Farina, Paul Sorvino, just some of the greatest actors who have ever, been, who ever lived at the time worked on this movie. And it's just an amazing achievement. Just it's just so many great things about this movie, from the cinematography, like the, uh, the scene sequences in this movie. Just if you list, you can't listen to, and then he kissed me without thinking about this or the opening or the opening of Adventures in Babysitting. But when I think of that song, I think of this scene. I think of that scene where Ray Liotta is taking Lorraine Baracco through the kitchen and the, the back of the kitchen in the restaurant and getting the front row seat and everything. It's just this one singular shot. And it's just so well done. It's just a phenomenal movie in every sense of the word. It never gives. It never lets up. It never falls off. The, it never falls off. It's just a fantastic, well-made movie. Anytime it's on TV, it's one of those ones that you just have to watch over and over again. It gives you everything you could possibly ask for, and then some. It's one of Scorsese's greatest movies. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's good, fellas. Need I say more? So. um... Let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Gene Hackman and Ann Archer in Narrow Margin. You seem angry, Michael. No, you, you don't understand. But don't be afraid. I would never harm you. Well, Michael, I lied. The woman was in the other room. She saw everything. Everything. Nobody knew about it. They still don't. You were witness to a murder, and I'd like you to come back and testify. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think you realize the situation you're in. I'll take my chance. You get on the train. 
train and lock the door. Those two guys, they got automatic weapons. They've seen me. They might not have seen you. They might not know what you look like. How do we stop him? We don't. It's not going to take very long to find this compartment. This is my life we're keeping with me. How much does a deputy district attorney make in a year? I don't like people like you. You know we're going to find her. It's just a matter of time. You really think you can get her off this train? Get who? <laughs> These guys are professionals. If they see you, they're going to kill you. Grab the handrail. Get on the roof. Gene Hackman. I have to make my move before they make theirs. Dan Archer. I'm scared to stand here. Sometimes the difference between life and death. Is a narrow margin. So the Narrow Margin is, of course, a remake of the 1952 film noir of the same name. And it has Gene Hackman and Ann Archer, directed by Peter Himes, who, would la who had done 2010, The Year We Make Contact, Outland, Running Scared, The Presidio. He would later do stuff like Stay Tuned, uh, Time Cop, Sudden Death, The Relic, End of Days. He's been a mixed bag director over the years, and this is a movie that's very much a mixed bag. The performances, I think, definitely carry it over. The concept of the train is that the train, of most of the action taking place on the train is very good, but it's a very formulaic script. It really is, and it's yeah, like I said, it's a very formulaic script. You can kind of tell where it's going to go. You can tell where it's going to end up going in pretty much every aspect. It's a very predictable movie, and that's a shame because the performances do carry it over to a little bit to where I say it's not the worst movie ever, but. It's better than I think it should it should have been, considering how lackluster the script was. So, I mean, yeah, overall, it's a it's an okay movie. It's one I wouldn't rush out to see again anytime soon, but it's fine for what it is. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie. Uh, Leonard Nimoy's follow-up to Three Men and the Baby. Uh, Gene Wilder in Funny About Love. Meet Duffy Bergman. He's a man's man. He's a lady's man. He's a lucky man. Could you please tell me who the Bulgarian bear wrestler is who made this? I'm the Bulgarian bear wrestler. This is delicious. Mm. If you don't love me, then just tell me you don't love me and I'll get out of the way. Get out of the way! He's a man whose biological clock I want one of those. is about to go off. 26 million couples a year have difficulty conceiving. Oh, what's, your, what's happening here? It's an auditory monitor. Oh, I thought maybe you were lonely. <laughs> <laughs> All we need to do is lower their temperature. This should do the trick. What's this little pocket for? Ice. Sometimes it takes more than a fertile imagination <laughs> to go from here to paternity. Come on! Worst thing that can happen, we'll have two hours of incredible, unreproductive sex. Work, work, work! Gene Wilder, funny about love. I should have said his comedic follow-up because he directed The Good Mother, which was a drama with Diane Keaton and Liam Neeson in it. But uh, Funny About Love is definitely a major comedic step down from Three Men and the Baby. It's very lackluster. In fact, Burt Reynolds pretty much kind of made a movie similar to this ten years prior. I think it, I can't remember, I think it was called Paternity, but it's pretty much that same plot with instead of Burt Reynolds, it's Gene Wilder. And Gene Wilder can be very funny, and you also have Christine Lottie, who's a great actress. But the comedy they're just given in here just doesn't work at all. It's very sitcomish it's very sitcomish nothing about this feels like it's necessary for a big screen motion picture and there's just nothing about it that really makes it stand out on its own it's a very forgettable movie it showed up on many people's worst of the year list in 1990 and you could really see why despite the fact that wilder and lottie are trying their best here there's just nothing really funny here they try to make is there are like i think a movie like knocked up does a pretty good job of Showing the pros and cons of being pregnant is of pregnancy and all that. Like, like this movie just feels like everything that happens is going to be a okay. Nothing bad's going to happen to you. All that kind of stuff. It's just like that's not how pregnancy works. I mean, it's just like like I've seen much better comedies about pregnancy that actually tackles those aspects. But this really doesn't work at all. This is a 
very bland movie that doesn't even feel like a real movie. It feels nothing more like a it feels more like a sitcom than an actual movie. It just it makes no sense to do a movie like this, especially with a guy like Leonard Nimoy who proved how good of a comedic director he could be with Three Men and the Baby. Just a good director overall with what he did with the two with Star Trek three and four, and. This was part of his downfall. I mean, after this, he made another movie that wasn't received very well, Holy Matrimony, and then he never directed another movie after that. And it's just a shame that that had to be, so... Yeah, so that's funny about love. There ain't nothing really funny about it, personally. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, which is The Boyfriend School, a.k.a. Please Don't Tell Her It's Me. It's... You'll see what I mean when you look at the trailer. Hi, I'm Gus Kubitschek. I just met the girl of my dreams. But there's one little problem. Gus is such a nice guy. A terrifically nice guy. But I'm, I'm sort of involved with someone already. <laughs> so my crazy sister decided to turn me into every woman's fantasy. I can make Emily fall in love with you. Uh, what we're gonna need is instant devastation. Let the transformation begin. <laughs> Lobo. Lobo Marunga. What are you doing? I thought you'd show me the scenic wonders here, Bats. Uh, oh, no, I have to get back to work. You seem to be searching for something that's in the eyes. I would suggest a pair of bikini briefs. Are you gay? No, I am not. Great, are you free of disease? I've got an ingrown toenail, but Emily, don't I am... Don't talk. That's all I wanted to know. I don't like lying to her. Lizzie, I cannot do this anymore. It is over. You are inches away from where you want to be. And I hate that it's Lobo she's crazy about, not the real me. She loves beard stubble and had a pair of contact lenses. Emily, please. Emily. I've got to tell her the truth. If she finds out for herself, I'm a dead man. Do me a favor. If you see her first, don't tell her it's me. Hemdale Film Corporation presents Steve Gutenberg, Jamie Gertz, Kyle McLaughlin, and Shelley Long as Lizzie. Don't tell her it's me. Yeah, when I saw this on Box Office Mojo, the title was actually The Boyfriend School because the, the script is based off of that book, but, there's tr but the trailers and everything else ca ha has it called Don't Tell Her It's Me. And it's just this basically just goes back to the to what I said about funny about love. It's just a sitcom premise blown up for the big screen. But this one I f think was even worse. This is just like wow, like asking Steve Gutenberg to put on that kind of an accent and try to be something different. It's just like, ugh, just no, 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 whoa, you really screwed that up big time. It's just. Man, this is a bad mo movie. This is a really bad movie. Like, I mean, wow, this is this was rough to get through. It, it, even with the cast it has, Shelley Long, Jamie Gertz, Kyle MacLachlan, Matt Janamick, Beth Grant. I think it's Matt Janamick. I think that's what I think that's what I meant to say. But you get the idea. Like, this is a premise that you've seen in all these different romantic comedies. It also it all ends up in the same way it's going to end in a rom a cliche ending it's going to end with the two getting with the two getting back together after the third act breakup and it's just just nothing enjoyable about this movie at least funny about love was trying but this just this doesn't feel like it's trying even that trailer just where were the good laughs in there you're supposed to put the good laughs in the trailer but it's just like i didn't laugh once it's just not a good movie just not a good movie just not a good movie whatsoever so anyway, on to the next movie, and the next movie is um, The Tall Guy with Jeff Goldblum in it. Funny and sexy, People Magazine. More appealing than ever, New York Times. The best physical comic actor in the movies, LA Times. Jeff Goldblum is The Tall Guy. Dexter King has a few problems. His career is on the skids. If 
you ever do anything funny in my show again, you elongated droplet of dumb, you're out. His roommate's a nymphomaniac. His love life is a mess. Oh! And he's scared to death of needles. They said the real experts do it without even looking. Then, Dexter meets Kate. Well, the thing is, I'm not the sort of girl who would up in that. I think it's much better to go to bed with the person on the first date to get it out of the way. Tall Guy, a romantic comedy that stands out from the crowd. You can see this movie also has Emma Thompson, Rowan Atkinson. The director of this is Mel Smith, who would later go on to direct Radio Land Murders and also the Bean movie. Richard Curtis, who would later write several classic movies such as such as Bridget Jones's Diary, Notting Hill, Love Actually. So there's a very good, talented group of people here, and the movie is pretty fun itself. It's very, it's very funny. I thought it's very, it is kind of formulaic, but it it has enough good performances all around to make it stand out on its own. Where you can really get you can really get into the laughs in the movie, and it is very it is very funny. It's very funny. It is risque at times. Like you saw, I had to cut part of that because I thought there was actually a trailer for that a long time ago. I remember seeing for this where they actually did show her boobs, Emma Thompson's boobs, and I thought they were about to show that off. So that's why I cut that off, but it just wasn't there. But you get the idea. This movie it it earns the R rating here, and it is a fu it's a fun time. It's a really fun movie. It's Jeff Goldblum doing what Jeff Goldblum does best, and that's good. that's kind of the fun thing about Jeff Goldblum. He's very, he can be very funny doing where, doing his normal stick. And this and while it's not all over this movie, he is very likable in here. Most of the people in this are very likable. It's a overall really enjoyable movie. Kind of an underrated movie. If you haven't seen The Tall Guy, if you like this type of comedy, the type of comedy from Richard Curtis, this is definitely going to work for you. It's definitely a very well made film. I'd say definitely check it out if you can. And we'll wrap it up with. Maybe the second best movie that came out this week, and that is the Coen Brothers, Miller's Crossing. From the makers of Blood Simple and Raising Arizona, a world where nothing is what it seems to be. Leo, is he still the boss? The day I back down from a fight, Casper's welcome to the rackets. This town and my place at the table. Casper, can he muscle in? I'm sick of taking a scrap from you, Leo. And I'm sick of a high hat. Tom, would he sell out a friend? You shouldn't be confronting Jenny, Casper. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I can still trade body blows with any man in this town. Except you, Tom. And Verna. Verna? Is she Leo's girl? What is it to Leo? Tell him you were a tramp and he should dump you. I want everybody to be friends. You, me, Leo, the Dane. You know who I am? The Dane. Has he got it figured? You dumping Leo for the guy who put a bullet in your brother? Bernie, will he turn the tables? Don't slot me. I want to watch you squirm. I want to see you sweat a little. All you got to do to show your friend is give me Bernie Burn Bum. Tommy, you can't do this. You don't bump guys. It's not right, Tom. I can't do it. Two of us have faced worse odds. Never without reason. I thought you said you didn't care about Leo. I said we were through. It's not the same thing. I'm talking about friendship. I'm talking about character. I'm talking about ethics. Crossing. 
So you have Goodfellas, which is a fantastic crime film of its of its own kind, and then you have Miller's Crossing here, which is just as good, maybe not as be maybe not better than Goodfellas, but it's just as good. I mean, this is a fantastic crime film, directed by the written and directed by the Coen Brothers. You have Gabriel Byrne, Marsha Gay Harden, John Turturro, Albert Finney, just this great cast all around. Some great moments. Every all throughout this movie. Great cinematography by Barry Sonnenfeld. Uh, just memorable scenes that still hold up to this very day. This is a great movie. It's one that not a lot of people talk about when they talk about the Coen Brothers' great movies because they had done, they had just done Raising Arizona and Blood Simple before this, and then they would have this great decade of great movies, especially in the latter half of the decade. But this was a fantastic, this is a fantastic movie all around. I mean, I mean, John Turturro's performance in this movie is great. It's a great performance that it's over dramatic, but it's not over dramatic where it's it feels like he's going it completely over the top just to win an Oscar. It's not an Oscar bait performance. He's generally giving it his all in this movie, and it shows in that scene in the tra in that scene in the trailer, and it also shows in that scene in the movie where he's out there begging for his life, showing no is, and he's just he's just crying out to be to be alive and not get killed, and it's just. It's a great movie. It's a fantastic film. I don't think I need to say anything more about this one. If you have not seen Miller's Crossing, you need to go see it. If you like Coen Brother movies, you're going to love this one a lot. Miller's Crossing, fantastic movie. Need I say more? So with that, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Next time around, we'll wrap up September with four movies, including Matthew Modine, Melanie Griffith, and Michael Keaton in the thriller Pacific Heights. We also have Dark Angel, not the Jessica Alba show, but a different Dark Angel uh, the sequel to the last picture show, Texasville, and Christopher Walken in King of New York. So we'll have those four movies to look at next time around. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another new episode. So until then, take care.